Hi everyone, and welcome to the Star Wars Reading Club book review of Darth Plagueis by James Lucino. And I think what I'll do is just to start it off just by giving a huge recommendation for this book. Uh, if anyone hasn't read it, I would strongly suggest that you do. I don't know if I would put it uh, number one or number two on all of the Star Wars books that I've read. It's either ahead or just behind of Path of Destruction. Uh, with the Darth Bane series. But I really enjoyed this book, and I'll get into it uh, in just a minute here of why I love the book so much. But what I'll do is just start off with the timeline, and basically the novel is broken down into three main parts. The first part taking place uh, 67 to 65 years uh, before the events of A New Hope. So it starts off uh, pretty far away from the Clone Wars, which I actually liked. Uh, just because in that first part, there's not a lot of Palpatine at that point. It's basically the story of how Darth Plagueis kills his master to become the Dark Lord of the Sith. So in the first part, we get a ton of Darth Plagueis, which I really enjoyed. And then in the second part, uh, after uh, Darth Plagueis takes Palpatine on as his Sith apprentice, uh, part two takes place 54 years to 52 years before the events of A New Hope. So even in this middle part, we're still 32 to 30 years before the start of the Clone Wars. And again, just a really good time frame for James Lucino to dive into, just because, again, we're seeing the build-up to the Clone Wars, and that's basically uh, the entire premise of the book. We're seeing how uh, Darth Plagueis and Palpatine, as Darth Sidious, uh, take Darth Bane's grand plan into fruition. So still in the middle part, we're getting a lot of uh, the training of Sidious and just seeing Palpatine's rise uh, within the Senate, uh, but then also too just seeing uh, how Darth Plagueis is trying to maneuver events. So that's part two, and then in part three, the last third of the book uh, is basically right at the timeline of The Phantom Menace. So you're about uh, 12 to 10 years out still away from the Clone Wars. So that's basically the timeline. Again, it takes place over a long course of time, which I really liked. Again, you really get to see the relationship build between uh, Darth Plagueis and Darth Sidious. But one of the main reasons that this is, again, I would say right now after just reading it, I would say it's probably my favorite book. Uh, but if I was to read Path of Destruction, it, it might be a battle for first. But nonetheless, the reason why I like this book, and I have to give so much credit to uh, James Lucino just as an author, and why I'm looking forward to Catalyst so much in a month, is this book really clears up and explains a lot of things that were confusing or just pretty much went unanswered uh, from the prequels. And I wrote a couple of them down, but basically uh, this book touches on, for example, uh, Padme's Rise, as Queen of Naboo, uh, the Trade Federation's blockade of Naboo. Again, it explains the entire backstory of uh, why the Trade Federation put a blockade on Naboo. You get to see Dooku's fall to the dark side, uh, Sifo Dyas, and how he came to order the clone army. Uh, you get to see the Sith and the Trade Federation alliance, Anakin's birth, uh, why Finnis Valorum ultimately fell in the Phantom Menace, and why Palpatine. Uh, Rose seemingly so interesting, uh, so uh, so uh, easily uh, by the Phantom Menace. So all of that was really interesting. And again, you can really tell too that uh, James Lucino did his homework. There's so many different species and so many planets involved. Uh, he really did a great job in just all of the background research that he did. Uh, but not only that too, he also did just sort of introduced a lot of different parts of Sith uh, mythology and just everything that went on between Darth Bane a thousand years before the events of this novel and then all the way up to uh, to about the Phantom Menace era. So a really great job and again we just get finally a point of view of what the Sith were doing just prior to the prequels and then uh, right up until the Phantom Menace. So I think just on everything that was introduced in this book and everything that explains that went unexplained from the prequels, again, it's a must read just because of that reason. And then not only that, with its explanations of a lot of the material from the prequels, the story is amazing as well. And we really get to see uh, Sith Lords in their public life. So you get to see how Darth Plagueis and Palpatine were able to manipulate events uh, in their public sphere. But then also what they were doing behind the scenes as well and just trying to bring 
the grand plan into fruition. So again, I love this book uh, basically just because of its explanations and then just the story was really great as well. Now, as you would imagine, the novel is primarily from the point of view of Darth Plagueis. And surprisingly enough, it doesn't cover the entirety of Darth Plagueis' life. I would say that it covers mainly the last half of his life. Uh, surprisingly enough, you see a lot more of the early life of Palpatine than you do of Plagueis. But basically what you're seeing is probably the last half of Plagueis' life from the point where he makes the decision that he's going to become the Dark Lord of the Sith by killing his master, Darth Tenebris, and then him working towards putting an end to Darth Bane's grand plan only in the sense that he's not going to continue the rule of two in the sense that he's going to pass all of his knowledge to an apprentice. What he was looking to do is to achieve immortality and then with his apprentice, who ends up being Palpatine, to rule the galaxy for a thousand years together. So we basically see Darth Plagueis try to bring that goal into fruition. And then in seeing that, in just trying to achieve that end game, we get to see how he's going to try to manipulate the midi-chlorians in order to achieve immortality and conquer death. So we get a lot of different points of view uh, just on the philosophical underpinnings of what the Force is, uh, just through Darth Plagueis' trying to achieve uh, his manipulation of the midi-chlorians. So that was all really great stuff. And just from the point of view, we see Darth Plagueis sort of underline a philosophy with the Force where he views the midi-chlorians as interlopers or something that's interceding with an individual's ability to connect with and use the force to its full extent. So his end goal is to basically control the midi-chlorians and try to impose his will upon the force rather than try to go through the midi-chlorians. So that stuff was all really great and really interesting. I really liked how we had a different character with Darth Plagueis from things that I've read in the past and a different type of, of character with the Sith Lord. He was really almost a genius in biology and just sort of a, a scientific mind and had a scientific application to the Force. So I really liked Darth Plagueis. I thought that he was a great character, uh, particularly when before this novel all we heard was his name and that brief story between Palpatine and Anakin in Revenge of the Sith. So a really great job with Plagueis in this novel. And then Palpatine's a little bit more interesting because we see him from a more earlier age. We see him be introduced into the novel, I think at the age of 17. And then right away, there's an interesting dynamic between Plagueis and Palpatine, where Plagueis, who could usually detect people's force presence and how strong they were in the force, isn't able to do that with Palpatine. It takes him time and really Palpatine, once he sort of kills his family and, and tries to, I don't think he tries to inform Plagueis that he can use the force, but there's just preceding events where he tries to prove himself to Plagueis. And then it's at that point finally where Plagueis realizes just how strong Palpatine is in the force. So it's a really interesting dynamic to see Palpatine's journey and his fall to being recruited by Plagueis and then we get to see Palpatine rise all the way up from that point when he's 17 and then become ultimately the Supreme Chancellor of the uh, of the Republic. So I really enjoyed both the characters of Plagueis and Palpatine and I thought James Lucino did a great job there. And just to mention a couple of the more interesting aspects of the book, the first point that I thought was really interesting is just seeing how few Sith actually followed the rule of two in there being only one master and then that master having one apprentice. So it was just interesting. If you think of this book as a bookend to uh, the start of Darth Bane and his imposition of the rule of two in Grand Plan, it was just funny to see how a lot of Sith Lords, they sort of respected the rule of two, but at the same time, they had their own insurance plans and were trying to achieve some of their different ends. A really, and again, maybe I should just mention that this was my third time reading this book, and some of the things surprised me, but some of the uh, different aspects of the book I had remembered. For example, when uh, Darth Venomous shows up, so what happened was Darth Tenebris had actually taken two apprentices, uh, Darth Plagueis being one, and then a uh, Darth Venomous being another. So it was just interesting, the first time that I read it, just being shocked by 
the arrival of Darth Venomous, who had shown up to challenge Darth Plagueis for sort of a supremacy of who was the actual Sith Master and Sith Lord at that point. But it was interesting just to see even Palpatine's approach to training Darth Maul. And Darth Plagueis didn't want Darth Maul being trained as a true Sith, but it seems that Palpatine didn't exactly go that way. He was positioning Darth Maul as his apprentice and even gave him the title of Darth, which to me indicates that he was training him and did take him on as, a, as his Sith apprentice. So just to see how few of the Sith Lords actually adhered to the Rule of Two was very interesting in the context of this being the bookend to the beginning of Darth Bane's grand plan. Now one of my favorite aspects of the book, and where I have to give James Lucino a ton of credit, is just with his description of how Palpatine and Plagueis saw the Jedi's use and view of the Force. I thought that this was really interesting stuff. Just in the way that uh, Palpatine and Plagueis came to see the Jedi's use of the Force as actually a rejection of the Force itself, wherein they weren't really abiding by the will of the Force. What they were doing is just carrying out uh, whatever the Senate wanted. And just in putting it that way, there is a lot of truth to that, and it is hard to argue against that that was really what the Jedi were doing. And I think that in doing that, what happened was we see Plagueis and Palpatine not really being, well, we're the bad guys, we're just going to take the Jedi out because we're the dark side and they're the light side. And really, at the end of the day, you could argue that what they were doing was really adhering to the will of the Force and then having to remove the Jedi because really they were just part of the corruption that was taking place in the Republic. And there's a lot of great questions that uh, Palpatine puts to, uh, sorry, that Plagueis puts to Palpatine throughout the novel, just in the sense of, well, if the Jedi are actually following the Force in the correct way, then why are we becoming so powerful? And why is the dark side becoming so strong? And then they're becoming so weak to the point where they're greatly diminished in their use of the Force. So I thought that that was all really great stuff, and it really sent the stage for why Plagueis and Palpatine were so keen in trying to destroy the Jedi Order and destroy the Republic and then trying to have the the Sith rise and rule the galaxy that way. It's not positioned so much as, well, we're evil, we want power for power's sake. It's really, well, we're the ones that are actually adhering to the will of the Force and then we have to remove people who have corrupted and perverted not just the light side and have ultimately taken the force out of balance, but just in a sense of not really a moral moral sense or uh, adhering to any type of morality, but just saying, well, the Senate and the Republic have become corrupt. The Jedi are just doing what the Republic and Senate wants. So ultimately, uh, to to get rid of the corruption and to actually adhere to the will of the force, then we have to remove both of them. So I thought that that was really interesting stuff and a, a great job by James Lucino just to give a viewpoint of and a motivation for the Sith and, and then to just describe what the Jedi were actually doing was opposed to the will of the Force. I also liked how we saw throughout the novel just the building of the relationships between Palpatine and uh, Darth Maul initially and then later on Dooku as well. And we do see, if you haven't read the book, it is very interesting in the fact that I think this was the first time we learned that Palpatine was given Maul as a young infant by his mother. So I thought that that was really good stuff. And then, again, we see Palpatine's relationship in training Darth Maul only in snippets throughout the novel. And Maul gains a more uh, prominent role as you get to the timeline with the Phantom Menace. But James Lucino does a great job of setting up Maul's pridefulness and why he ultimately lost to Obi-Wan. That was something that always bothered me with the Phantom Menace, just how easily Darth Maul was just sort of let his guard down and Obi-Wan was able to, uh, to trick him in a lot of ways and then defeat him. Not through any uh, skill on the part of Obi-Wan or lack of skill on Darth Maul, but sort of just through his pride. So James Lucino did a great job of just setting Maul up in that way. And then it was just great to see the eventual and gradual fall of Dooku to the dark side over the different time periods in the novel. So I really liked that. And it came to a point 
where Palpatine starts to consider Dooku as his backup plan. Although he has Maul, uh, he's considering Dooku along the way, seeing, well, this Jedi is probably going to fall to the dark side at some point, and then looks to him as a, as a backup plan or uh, some insurance in that way. But ultimately what happens is Palpatine does become a confidant of Dooku throughout the novel, where Palpatine learns a lot about the Jedi Order from Dooku uh, himself. And then it's very interesting that Palpatine learns about the prophecy of the Chosen One, and then also uh, just the existence of Anakin and his strength with the Force. That all comes from Dooku. So I really like that stuff. Uh, Palpatine just being always one step ahead of the Jedi, again, through his own skills and, and his position as a senator and ultimately a supreme chancellor, but just having that role and position as a confidant with Dooku. Again, that's just really great stuff, and it really makes a lot of sense why we would then see uh, Dooku fall to the dark side and why Palpatine would just have so much knowledge uh, as you go on to uh, the Clone Wars era. So I thought that it was uh, really interesting to see the relationship that was built between Palpatine and his two apprentices in Dooku and Maul. Uh, that was really well done. And then right up there with me, just on my favorite aspects of the book, right up there with how James Lucino described and gave a discussion about how Plagueis and Palpatine viewed the Jedi's use of the Force and ultimately them perverting, perverting the light side and perverting the Force by following not the will of the Force but the will of the Senate. Right up there with that was just the concept of the Force striking back at the dark side. And basically what happened here was we hear a description of how uh, Plagueis and Palpatine ultimately tipped the balance of the Force to the dark side. We don't actually get to see how they, done, how they did it in the novel. We only get to hear about it after the event actually occurred. But through months of intense med meditation, I guess, they were able to tip or shift the balance of the Force to the dark side. And they were confident when they did that that there was no negative results that were caused be because of what they did. They knew that the Force might strike back, might strike back at them for doing so, uh, but there was nothing that, was, uh, that came about because of what they did. And it was either because of them shifting the balance of the Force to the dark side through their meditation, or because Plagueis tried to bring about a Force-sensitive being into, into creation. Uh, I guess what he wanted to do was to try to birth somebody who was uh, force sensitive uh, just through all of the experiments that he was doing. It was either because of the meditations done by Palpatine and Plagueis to shift the balance of the force to the dark side or because Plagueis tried to uh, bring about a force sensitive being. One of those two events, and we're not sure exactly which one it was, but ultimately, what happened was the Force struck back at them, at Palpatine and Plagueis, and uh, struck back at the dark side, ultimately trying to bring balance to the Force. And it's just really interesting, just because this is a reasonable explanation for why Anakin was born. It's kind of left confusing, we'll say, in the prequel trilogy. But this gives a good, reasonable uh, explanation for why Anakin was ultimately born. And it is very interesting, too, because through uh, the explanations of Dooku, where he explains to Palpatine the Jedi concept of the Chosen One and the prophecy of the Chosen One, and ultimately Dooku even tells Palpatine about uh, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn's finding of Anakin, after all that is explained, there's a bit of fear in Palpatine and Plagueis that the Force may have struck back at them in the form of Anakin. So that was all just great stuff. And we even had a scene where Plagueis views Anakin from afar. Uh, they weren't face to face. But just looking at Anakin through the Force from afar, he is able to see into the future of what ultimately would be the Clone Wars and the rise of Darth Vader. And he's not able to make sense of it in the sense that he knows what's exactly going on, but he does get visions of large space battles and even a black helmeted cyborg, that type of thing. So in seeing that, Plagueis knows that Anakin is somebody who is going to change the course of history and then is very fearful that what he and Palpatine did 
uh, actually cause the force to strike back at them. So that was all just great stuff. Again, not only does it give us a reasonable explanation for why Anakin was born, but it's just interesting because it gives a little bit more information about the force and ultimately the prophecy of the chosen one and then also just the concept of the force itself and uh, and bringing the force into balance. Now what I also really enjoyed seeing is just the build towards uh, Plagueis and Palpatine uh, come to the idea that they're going to need something, a protracted war, uh, in order to turn the galaxy against the Jedi and the Republic for good, but then to ultimately uh, try to destroy all of the Jedi within the Order. And what I really liked about that is the process made sense where Palpatine and Plagueis are describing what they're going to need and what they're going to need to do uh, in order to control both sides in a war and then to ultimately uh, strike swiftly and at once against the Jedi because they know that they're, they can't pass a law or just outright name the Jedi um, as enemies of the Republic. It's going to have to be something quick and stealthy. But also to just to see them come to that that idea, but then just to see it come mainly from Plagueis at the end of the day. Although it's questionable whether or not Palpatine was putting ideas in his head, but we do see that really the idea of a protracted war and ultimately what would become the Clone Wars really started uh, with Darth Plagueis and not so much from Palpatine. So I thought that that was interesting. We get to see that the way that Kamino came into the picture and just the idea to use a clone army, again, that was all Plagueis. And really, Kamino only showed up because Plagueis was trying to uh, clone different beings that he could ultimately experiment on and uh, and use those beings to try to manipulate their uh, midi-chlorians and try to achieve his goal of immortality. So the idea of Kamino, that was pretty much all Plagueis there. And then also, too, it was Plagueis who was instrumental in kind of putting it into Jedi Master Sifo Diaz's mind that he should be the one to go to uh, Kamino and get them to commission a clone army to be used by the Republic in secret. So a lot of the, the Clone Wars, uh, what would ultimately become the Clone Wars, a lot of those ideas uh, really started with Darth Plagueis. And I thought that that was uh, just a really interesting take uh, from James Lucino. So I really enjoyed and I liked that concept that a lot of the Clone Wars and a lot of the ideas which would ultimately build to the Clone Wars actually started with Darth Plagueis rather than uh, with Palpatine only because it makes sense that something, an idea that important and that grand in, in scale uh, would have to go back a couple of, uh, of years just before it was sprung. So I like that that uh, Darth Plagueis came up with a lot of those uh, Clone Wars ideas. And it's, it is more involved than what I'm even saying, too. Again, to carry out the Clone Wars, it needed uh, Plagueis and his public life as somebody within the banking clan. Uh, it needed someone like him to be able to put those pieces together. So it does make sense. Again, I'm not touching on every part of it, but it does make sense the way that it came about uh, in the novel that Darth Plagueis had a large role to play in the coming about of the Clone Wars. So I enjoyed that, and I think what I'll do is just the final part that I'll touch on is just the ending of the novel. Again, there really is, you could talk uh, for days about this novel, there's just so many great parts, but I think what I'll do is just talk about the ending at this point, and what would be the ultimate death of Darth Plagueis at the hands of Palpatine. And from my previous two readings of this novel, I always remembered uh, that my biggest disappointment with the book was just the ending, in so much as it seemed like when Sidious turned on Darth Plagueis, it seemed like it kind of came out of nowhere, and to be honest, it seemed a little bit lame that what would happen was Darth Plagueis would uh, pretty much just get inebriated, and he would he was drunk just when they were celebrating uh, Darth um, Sidious's and, and Palpatine's rise to become a Supreme Chancellor of the Republic. I thought that that was lame that uh, Darth Plagueis would get drunk and then Palpatine would take advantage of that and then just use his Force Lightning to kill Darth Plagueis. And just the fact that it kind of came out of nowhere, you don't really see it build throughout the novel 
that Palpatine had the idea of, of killing Darth Plagueis and turning upon Darth Plagueis's view that Palpatine would rule in public and then behind the shadows, uh, Darth Plagueis would rule as his co-chancellor. It seemed like it came out of nowhere, but in this reading it seemed, maybe because I was looking for uh, some evidence a little bit more during this reading, it did seem like it was built in that right from the beginning, uh, Palpatine wasn't the type of person that was going to share power uh, with Plagueis once he became the Supreme Chancellor. And there's a really good line that Palpatine has uh, as he's killing Plagueis with his Force Lightning, where he just says something to the effect of, you were doing such a good job of manipulating events uh, to the point where I became Supreme Chancellor, but you left yourself with no position. So basically, you had no position to play ultimately at this point. And that just basically pointed out the fact that once Palpatine became Supreme Chancellor, he didn't need Plagueis anymore to be a co, uh, co-chancellor co with him. And it just makes sense. Again, right from the beginning, uh, Palpatine states that his ultimate dream for his life is to rule. And once he is made Supreme Chancellor, that's where he's in a position to actually do that. But then also, too, it just makes sense from the position that at that point, the day before uh, Palpatine becomes Supreme Chancellor of the Republic, they already have the pieces in place to be able to uh, carry out the Clone Wars and to sort of build for the next decade of bringing that war about. And I think it was important, too, that Palpatine did have Dooku. The actual final scene from the novel is Palpatine and Dooku talking and you could see at that point that Dooku had left the Jedi and was pretty much fallen to the dark side at that point. We don't see uh, Dooku actually become Palpatine's apprentice but it's it's pretty clear at that point uh, that Dooku's about to become uh, Palpatine's Sith apprentice. So it does make sense again that Palpatine at the end of the novel would kill Plagueis and not really need him anymore at that point. He's learned everything that he needs to learn from Plagueis, and there's really no need to have Plagueis as co-chancellor. And really, it would just make things a little bit more confusing at that point as well. But also, too, just a justification, again, why I think I accepted Palpatine's turn on Plagueis, was just the fact that as Palpatine is killing Plagueis, he's taunting him in a way that states, well, you thought that you could turn away from the uh, from the grand plan of Darth Bane. So he's, I think for Palpatine, he wasn't on the same path that Plagueis was on where Plagueis is trying to achieve immortality. For Palpatine, what he's more focused on is trying to bring the grand plan into, fru into fruition. And then to try to become Supreme Chancellor and then have the Clone Wars and then destroy the Jedi Order, and then rule the galaxy. So I think they were basically on different paths at that point, and Palpatine's going to push to rule the galaxy and not worry so much about manipulating the midi-chlorians and trying to achieve immortality. And if that is an end goal for, for Palpatine, it's going to come after his achieving uh, rule over the galaxy. So I did think that the ending made a lot more sense for me, uh, during this reading, my third reading, and it did make sense that at that point Palpatine was done uh, with Plagueis and he wasn't going to be the guy to to rule uh, either beside Plagueis or have Plagueis dictate what he wanted done uh, from behind the scenes to Palpatine. So I did like the ending at this point on this reading and I think at this point what I'll do is I'll stop the review and discussion here. Again, as I always say, on the reviews. I'm very happy to hear suggestions uh, for different novels and also uh, very happy to hear about uh, what you guys thought about the novel or some of the different aspects that I discussed uh, if you have read the novel yourself. So again, I highly recommend uh, Darth Plagueis. Again, this is either my favorite or my second favorite book, uh, but right now it's probably my favorite. So I highly recommend uh, and suggest that you do get this one if, if you're able to. I think going forward what I'm going to do is tomorrow Ahsoka comes out uh, by E.K. Johnson on the 11th of October and what I'll do is I'll try to get that 
um, my hands on that book right away so that I can get a review and discussion up of that book. I th I'm actually looking forward to it because as I understand it, it should give a lot of details of what Ahsoka was up to in between um, her leaving the Jedi Order and then her reappearance in the TV show Rebels. So I'll do a review and discussion of Ahsoka. And then also I have started in on the Marvel uh, graphic novels of the Darth Vader series. I've already read um, the, the first part of that, that series. So what I think I'll do is my next review will be the Ahsoka novel and then I'll start doing some reviews and discussions of the Darth Vader series because I'm really enjoying that Darth Vader series too and uh, I think it'd be interesting uh, just to hear what you guys think about that as well. But that's it for this review. Again, highly suggest that you read Darth Plagueis if you're able to. I thought that it was a really good book. But thank you very much for listening. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, have a great day, everyone, and I look forward to talking to you guys again soon.